the new earth. I believe what Jesus has in store for us is going to be absolutely this. Bible says about heaven, you get excited. Instead you know, of the new earth that we need mm. to cultivate here. Heaven's mm -hmm. a real practical, physical, it's an active place. Mm. What won't be there? Welcome to the I Believe podcast series. I'm so glad you've joined us for this final episode, for this final conversation on another important biblical topic, the new earth. But before we get into it, let us pray. Dear Lord, I thank you so much that we can take another opportunity to talk about you and your word and the plans that you have for us. I pray that you would guide and bless our conversation today. Pray that, you would, that your Holy Spirit would lead us and also all those who listen into the conversation. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor Don, so here we are at number 28. <laughs> number 28. So that is 28 fundamental beliefs of what Seventh-day Adventists believe. And uh, we've made it by God's grace, by Give God's grace. And uh, it's, it's uh, ironic that we end with a title in the belief that is the new earth. So we end with something new. <laughs> so that's the title for, for number 28, the new earth. And today we're privileged to have Pretensia Hose with us. It's a blessing to have you with us. That we can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Pretensia is yeah, a special part of our congregation mm. here. Mm -hmm. And for those, maybe people are listening in that don't know you as well, do you want to share a little bit about who you are and about your journey with God? Sure. I've been raised in a Christian home. Born there, um, been attending to Kempton Park Saint Adventist Church since very small. I was baptized when I was 11 years old. Wonderful. But as I grew older, I found out yeah, maybe I didn't really realize what baptism is all about. So I, God put it on my heart to be rebaptized at the age of 23. Mm. Um, since then, you just grown grace and knowledge. Mm. Um, about 15 years back, we um, we moved from Gauteng to. Somerset West. Mm. <laughs> Some of my kids can attend Helderberg mm. High School. And um, yes, at that stage we had family members attending Silverleaf mm. Congregation. Okay. And um, so they introduced us to Silverleaf. We became members and we've been members ever since. Mm -hmm. Yes. And there's a few people that I knew before coming back here as a pastor and their family was one of those oh, families. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, no, it's 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 good to have you here, Retenja. She's a special part, like you say, of our church community here. Uh, your family, quite involved at that uh, Silverleaf. So I can honestly say Silverleaf wouldn't be the same without you. <laughs> <laughs> but today we are not talking about old memories. <laughs> We're talking about uh, new memories and uh, or at least memories that we would like to make. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm excited about this topic, not just for what it, uh, you know, for the conversation only, but for what it means to us, you know. Um, I hope it brings you. Man, I like, a, I, I like a new pair of trousers or a pair of shoes, but there's nothing like a new earth. <laughs> 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 we haven't experienced that yet. So, so, yeah, but I think before we get into this topic, the new earth, maybe let's read um, what Seventh-day Adventist actually believe about the new earth. So I read, On the new earth in which righteousness dwells, God will provide an eternal home for the redeemed and a perfect environment for everlasting life, love, joy, and learning in His presence. For here God Himself will dwell with His people, and suffering and death will have passed away. The great controversy will be ended. And sin will be no more. Mm -hmm. 
all things, animate and inanimate, will declare that God is love, and he shall reign forever. Amen. And then we have a few verses there that supports this belief, which I'm sure we will visit today. You know, when I, when I, when I think about heaven, I, I've, I think in pictures, you know, uh, reading these Bible stories and, uh, you know, these Bible children's books. And uh, sometimes I read it to my children. Mm. Uh, when we talk about heaven, I get excited, mm. you know, <laughs> and especially when they start asking me questions. Oh, please ask me more. Ask <laughs> me more. <laughs> you know, let me use more of my imagination, you know. But as much as we want yeah. to use our imagination, you know, uh, I maybe want to uh, open up with this verse. Um, about in First Corinthians, and I think, uh, Pastor Don, you probably know which verse I'm going to, and I want to read it uh, 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 properly. You know, that's why I want to say it um, as Paul wrote it to the Corinthians in First Corinthians chapter two, verse nine. At least he quoted it to to them. But just as it is written, things which eye has not seen. And ear has not heard, and which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. Hmm. So we can imagine, we can draw pictures and wonderful pictures, and we can interpret as much as we can the Bible and make it our own. But something tells me we are missing even these beautiful pictures. There's something amiss there. You know, and when I, when as much as we can get excited about the new earth and what it means, you know, but today this is the I Believe podcast series. We want to believe, we want to know, Retention, what do you believe about the new earth, about this thing that no eye has seen? Tell us about what is really going on into the mind of God. What has He prepared for us? You know what? Um, I want to start to see, I believe in heaven, mm -hmm. in the sense of. Mm. I don't believe many people out there makes heaven a reality. Yeah. Nobody has ever seen heaven. Mm. Nobody has ever been there, like in coming back and say, ah, oh, this is, except for the witnesses that we have in the Bible. Mm. Now, we know that God cannot lie. So mm. anything that he says mm. in the Bible is true. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at Revelation uh, 21 verse 5. It says, mm. and he that sat upon the throne said, behold, I make all things new. Amen. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. faithful. Amen. So because God cannot lie, mm. I can believe everything that stands in the Bible. Mm. So I can take Bible as truth and say, I can believe in heaven. It's not mm. just a fable or a fantasy. Mm. And that's why I can say, I believe heaven is a reality. Mm. I'm just thinking of what that mm. verse Pastor Ezra read. The next one says, but God has God revealed us us through his spirit, something like that. Mm. And I mean, these, this is the testimonies of exactly. God's spirit. So, exactly. I mean, I don't think maybe he's revealed everything, but what he has revealed, we can trust, like you say. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. Mm. And I think the, 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 that's an important case to make there, that the new earth, you know, heaven, as we sometimes think of it, you know, the new earth is a real place. Mm. You mm -hmm. know, it's not a pie in the sky uh, we over spiritualize. Pile, yeah, we over spiritualize it, eh? Uh, but yes. but how do we do that, Pastor Don? How do we over spiritualize it? Uh, is it by accident? Is it? Uh, yeah, do we do it on purpose? That over spiritualize? Or why do we do it? Maybe I should rather ask that. What do you think? What's the thinking behind that? Um, yeah, I don't know. What comes to mind is maybe we, we base it on what we've heard, what other people are saying, mm -hmm. but I mean, we, we need to check what the Bible is actually revealing about heaven. Mm. So, mm. I mean, I don't have, I'm not answering your yeah, question, no, no, but sure. you know, maybe our perceptions are often what you hear being spoken, you know, mm. like we're going to be playing harps the whole day yeah. or... Exactly. I think, I think Hollywood's got much to do with that. Yeah. But I mean, mm. if you've ever seen what, have you ever... Look at this little thing. Oh, sitting on a cloud and playing a harp. Mm. That impacts our I know. And that is not really what heaven is all about. So it's just a portrayal of something that sticks. And that's not how it's going yes. to be. Heaven's mm -hmm. a real practical, physical, it's an active place. Mm. Even if joy is going to be a part of it, even if praise is going to be mm. a part of it, sure. it's not the whole picture. And if you look at that picture, just like sitting on a cloud and playing a harp, with due respect, it doesn't seem very um, attractive to me. 
But if you look at what the Bible says about heaven, you get excited mm. because that is reality so, and yeah. how it is going to be in the real, in the real mm-hmm. sense. Yeah. And, and it's, it's good that it's something to look forward to, that you want to be there. You don't want to miss out on this. Exactly. <laughs> Very true. Very the, true. The, the, the truth is, once we start making heaven a reality, it's a place that we would want to go to. Yes. Man, I, I've seen people being scammed <laughs> of holidays. You know, they say, fill in this pay over this amount. And then they get there and it's a fake ticket. Or there's no, maybe the place, you've heard of the place, but you can't get there because it was a scam, you know. And uh, people have been disappointed throughout their lives. Mm. Uh, Maybe the disappointment or the the projection come from there, from the disappointment. that Mm. How can something be so good, Mm. you know. And uh, yeah, the the way they they think about heaven as as such. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure we'll get into it, but I, I'm just thinking of when God created the world. You know, Genesis 131, let me read it to you. This verse really stands out for me because after all six days of creating, this is when God looked, this is what he saw. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. This is the New King James Version. And Everything that God creates is good. He is good, and he can only create what is good. So, I mean, that for me tells me when he recreates the earth, when it becomes new, Mm. it's also going to be very good, like it was in the beginning before sin. Sin is going to be, will never taint this universe again. Yeah. And if Pastor, if I can tie maybe the two thoughts together of it to be good and people not wanting to believe it, in, you know the saying, it's too good to be true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think people are so used to being disappointed mm. in life. Mm. They are too afraid to say, I yes. want to believe in it because it's just going to be too good to be true. So maybe yes. they don't want to think about it because they are, they, they are afraid they're going to be disappointed. Mm. You know, I look forward to this, but it just didn't happen. But that that's why we can rely on God's word and say, Really, it is going to happen. You can trust this one mm. source. You can trust with your life. Yes. Like this one, you're not going to be disappointed. Like not disapp- exactly. <laughs> yes, yes. If, exactly. if anything, uh, to flip it around, the disappointment of this life should actually make you want to be in heaven. Where there will be no more disappointment. <laughs> in fact, exactly. Revelation 7, 7 verse 16 says, They will hunger no longer, mm. nor thirst anymore, nor will the sun beat down on them, nor any heat. For the lamb in the center of the throne will be the shepherd and will guide them to the springs Amen. of the water of life. Mm. And God will wipe every tear from their eye. What a wonderful mm. uh, promise. What a wonderful thought that no more pain, no more hunger. And, and, and I, don't, it's, it's, I think it's much deeper in that sense than the physical hunger as well. You know, we hunger for our relationships. We hunger for these brokenness uh, or the, the things we once had as God intended. Man, I hunger for the, the fruit, obviously, of Eden. But to see Jesus face to face, as uh, Revelation just said, the, uh, the, the, the lamb will be in the center of the throne. He will be our shepherd. Our, a lamb being our shepherd. <laughs> that is who Jesus is. And for me, that is uh, something very, very uh, amazing. Maybe I can ask a question here. So now in our previous conversation, we were looking at the millennium and the end of sin. So we we learned there that, you know, at Christ's resurrection, uh, at Christ's second coming, the righteous will be resurrected. The righteous living will go to heaven. There'll be a thousand years where God's people will share in the judgment um, or they'll reign with him for a thousand years. Then... Um, the second resurrection takes place. So, and then finally, the end of end of sin, mm. end of Satan. So, my question lies in here. So, we're talking about heaven, and now also the new earth. So, how do we make sense of both of those? Okay. Is the, are they the same place? Is it different? Yeah. Okay. All right. The the what we know, uh, Pastor Don. <coughs> Uh, to my memory, is that uh, God will come, according to Revelation, and for a thousand years, we will, we will go. To we heaven. Will, to heaven, <laughs> if you will. You, right? You, he's taking us to heaven. Yes. Heaven, yeah. as in that sense. But then after the thousand years, the New Jerusalem, uh, Revelation 21 tells us, you've quoted it there now again, comes down from heaven as a bride <clears throat> adorned for her. Husband, 
and settle this on this earth. So the psalm, the, actually the psalmist also notes and says that heaven is God's, but the earth he has made for man. So this earth is actually where we're supposed to be. It just, now this new earth, it will be the headquarters of the universe because God himself will be here. According so, to my understanding, yeah. So yeah. the new earth is the earth made new. It's, yes. uh, it's still this earth. Mm. Yes. We're going to come back to this earth. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. So, so that, that, that carries on your thought of that tangible place. This earth is here now. So, so we can create that picture. It's going to be like, yeah. Mm. yes, that's a yeah. good point. So, so yeah. Mm. Do you know what excites me? Is that if you look at this earth with all the rulers that's reigning here, uh, it makes you think of the Old Testament story of when the Israelites said, we want to have a king. Mm. And Samuel said, oh, be careful because the king is going to wage taxes <laughs> and they're going to use your children mm. as slaves and this and this. And they said, no, but we want to have a king. And since that time, we never had a righteous king. But mm. now with Jesus on a new earth living among us, he's going to be the king of kings and his kingdom is going to be forever. We are going to look forward to a righteous ruler. Mm. It's going to be perfect. We again are going to be restored under his rulership as it was originally the plan. Mm -hmm. And um, that's amazing because now you are learning from God himself. Mm. You're walking with him. You're doing his will. You, I don't know. You, I don't think there's anything more closer to a utopia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's no utopia on earth, but there is mm -hmm. going to be much better than a utopia in heaven, mm -hmm. you know, and on mm -hmm. the new earth. I agree. Maybe we can read Revelation 21. Let me read verse 1 maybe to 5. And like for me, just thinking of Jesus is going to be with us. He's, you know, the ruler. Just thinking of that, the desire that God has always had to be with his people. But because of sin, he had to send Adam and Eve out the garden. Um, but he didn't give up on, on that relationship. I mean, even I think when they built the sanctuary, God says, he gave Moses these instructions, that I may dwell among them. Mm. And eventually here, we see that desire from God being fulfilled, mm -hmm. where he can once again have that, that relationship be with us. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people." Just thinking of what Retenja was sharing. Mm. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Mm -hmm. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So beautiful. Due to, Yeah. I don't, I don't think people can fathom it. Mm. I mean, we can just, as we've previously mentioned, we can, as humans, our minds can just grasp so much. It's usually what we've already experienced or what we are thinking, what we are seeing. And it's very difficult to fathom something that we have never seen before, mm. before never experienced before. So I th I'm thinking of all the hope, the idea of the new earth mm. brings. You know, Parents, you're not going to lose your children anymore. Mm, <laughs> you know, I remember when my children was young, I was just like, always when they go out, they would, I would just like worry about them. You know, is they safe? And are they safe? And just like, uh, will they be okay where they are? And sometimes I would get fearful. But I, I once told my kids, you know, it will be so good to know, um, bye, mom, I'm going to go to wherever. Oh, you're sure. See you in two, three weeks. Mm. Enjoy. Mm. And I don't have to worry because mm. we are in a perfect, safe mm. environment. Nothing will, get, will harm or be harmed yeah. in that environment. I tell you, it's just like amazing. And, and this may be difficult for us to picture in the sense of, because all we know has been yes. tainted by sin. Yes. Maybe Adam and Eve would be able to tell us, mm. you know, or they'll say, you know, this is what we were experiencing in the beginning. Yes. And 
even more so, I'm just thinking, you know, Adam and Eve knew God as their creator. And we also have the privilege of knowing God as our creator. Um, but when God recreates the new earth, we'll also know him. Or he's our creator and redeemer. We've been, it's, you know, it's, it's like a double, a double blessing. He's not only our creator, he's also redeemed us to make us experience this new earth. Yeah, I think um, in, in, in that thought is also carried in the fact that who will occupy heaven? You know, um, Matthew 5.5. 5. I think it's Matthew 5.5. 5. Let's see. But blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the yeah. earth. Yeah. I don't know what version do you have, Pastor Don. What does yours say? New King James, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit mm. the earth. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So there, there, there's, a, there's an attitude of heaven that we need to cultivate even. Well, the, it says earth. There's an attitude of the new earth that we mm. need to cultivate here. And I want to bring us to, to that part of the conversation where we recognize what will we do there. You know, um, what will heaven actually be like? Is it just like you said, floating on uh, clouds there? But there's an actual activity for us to do. I think the first thing that jumps to mind is the personal relationship that we will have with each other and with God. Is that bond mm. that we get to see Jesus face to face. So this new earth then, when you have something new, it's, it hasn't been opened. It hasn't been. It's, it's, and most of the occasion, if you have something new, it's something you've never had before. That's mm. why it's new. Mm. All right? We don't have new of the same thing. Maybe some people do, but most often it's, it's something you've never had before. And even though we appreciate the relationship we have with Christ now, in the new earth, I think that relationship will be very different to what we experience now. Um, the understanding of who God is will be very different to what we have now. Um, the way we cultivate our land and our... I mean, there, there's not no going to be weeds. <laughs> hey, we have a weed problem here. <laughs> uh, no, it's not going to be... So even how we appreciate things will be so different hmm. than what we have now. And I, yeah, I, I want to convey that, you know, and, and maybe talk around that of what we will do. There. What do you think we'll do there? I love the text in uh, Isaiah 65, verse 21. Yes. Um, very practical. Yes. Okay. Yes. You're not just going to sit on clouds. Yes. We must build houses. Isaiah 65, verse 21. Uh, from the King James Version. Mm. We will build houses and inhabit them. Mm. We shall plant vineyards and eat of the fruit of them. And I like the, the next verse. It almost... If I can throw it in a little bit of an other, other angle. I'm thinking of slaves specific mm. in this one. Mm -hmm. mm. Because many times we labor for others. But Jesus says, you will build and another will not inhabit it. Mm. You shall not plant and another eat of it. You will enjoy the fruit of your own hands. Mm. And that's, that's a hope. That, that's a blessing for yeah. so many people today in different positions in life. Mm. And it's not teaching you to be selfish. It's just God's teaching you, you know, yeah. you're going to see what you're doing. Yeah. And you're going to be active. You are, you know, I don't, my, my brother always said, you know, the Lord knows I love fish. So maybe my house will have one big fish tank just holding out by the water and just <laughs> see all the sharks. Yeah. And, you know, he's using that imagination, yeah. you know. Yeah. And um, that's like, I haven't seen, you know. Yes, <laughs> but yes, I mean, yes, it's just yes. like, I don't. I don't think that we can really grasp what, what the Lord has in store mm. for us. I think God is getting excited. I don't know. I get excited when I, mm. when I organize a birthday party for Saudi. Mm. And I've got this and this and this planned. Mm. And it's just like, I want to show him this. I want to see that expression on the face when I show him this. Mm. And I almost feel that God has the no. same excitement. He cannot wait for us to come with him because yeah. he wants to see our expressions when he see, shows this and this and this oh, for us. It's just like, wow, Lord. You know? And it's tailor-made, eh? Absolutely. Taylor made just feel like your brother's whatever he'll have in his house of floating fish. I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, fish how pond. much more would God know what would be a blessing to us? Absolutely. You know, 
I created yes. this unique individual, and oh, this mm. is just going to be. Oh, That's they're going to love it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I just want to do this verse. It really yeah. speaks to me. You know, um, the fact that we will build and not another inhabit. Mm. We will plant and not. I, it, it really speaks to me about productivity. You know, God. I mean, again, coming back, God planted Adam, uh, planted the God of Eden and put Adam inside of it to take care of the, mm. of the God, to take care of the animals. And, you know, we will get back to that. We the joy of tilling the ground. I don't know, somehow, Pastor, uh, we, we, it's been thought that to walk around with a collar and a tie is, is, is a noble <laughs> occupation. Mm. I think one of the best ones is to, yes. to till the ground. I think that's the first work that God gave yeah. Adam and Eve, or Adam and Eve to help. Mm. Um, I'm also thinking, yeah, I mean, country living is, you know, I desire <laughs> for country living in here, mm. like, whoa. This is it. This is mm. ultimate country living. This one. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's 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 really, and and you know this. I don't know how many times, Pastor, you have moved. I've moved a few times. <laughs> you just said you've moved a few times, but this is going to be yeah. an eternal home. Yes. No more packing up. <laughs> you know, no more packing up. No more get it, getting rid of I don't know of the <laughs> stuff we accumulated. You know, because uh, we accumulate stuff for the fear of going. We always, <laughs> it's, it's mm. a vicious cycle, mm. uh, the way we, 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 we move around. But the fact that this is an eternal mm. home, and to my understanding is that our brains will grow as well. Mm. I was what? just wanting to, I was thinking of learning as well. Yes, yeah. please, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was just thinking that's something that I would look forward to is opportunity to to learn with you know just to you know you've got eternity and what makes sense to me is our knowledge of god like god is so infinite so amazing so loving that will be throughout eternity will be gaining a a a deeper appreciation for his character to say wow like i th i thought i knew the love of god mm -hmm. but now <laughs> I've seen even more of it. And I mean, it's so, so deep that we'll never got, get to the bottom of it. So, and, and that's just knowing God's character. But what about the whole universe, how to explore? I think God appreciates us um, learning about his creation, even now, what he has made, how it works, mm. you know, mm. and how much more when our, our minds are mm. operating at optimum levels. <laughs> yeah. And something just to add to that, um, I was thinking, eternity is a long time. Mm. There's no stop to eternity. Mm. And as we know, into eternity, we'll always have something to praise God for. Mm. Now, in our human minds, is we pray so far, and then like we start to think, okay, what's the else? What's left, you know? Mm. Mm. But that concept of continual mm. learning throughout eternity, mm. if you see something new, in creation or salvation mm. or God's character. Mm -hmm. It's just like, wow, Lord, you're amazing. You know, mm -hmm. it, it continually just shows you how there's no stop to the mm. revelations into eternity. Yes. God yeah. is going to show us. And, and we we'll always have something new to praise God for. Mm. Lord, you're amazing. Mm. Just look at this. Hi, Pastor, you still can see this. <laughs> Jesus just showed me this. It's just like, this is amazing, you know. <laughs> so, it's a continual progress. A continual process. reasons for rejoicing. Mm. Up to eternity. How big is God? Mm. It's amazing. It's just like, it's yeah. mind-blowing. No, that is exciting. I'm, I'm thinking is. of uh, one preacher said, you know, they, they, they build these telescopes and build these Hubble telescopes and they sent this James Webb telescope into space to see better, see farther. Mm. And, and the spiritual was saying, it's almost like God is saying, build more. I want you to see, build bigger. Come <laughs> see, see how big this universe is. Like you, you ain't know? seen nothing yet. And you <laughs> ain't seen nothing yet. And then they get excited over a dot on a page. And like a little dot, we saw a dot in the cosmos somewhere. But God is saying, man, it, it, it's so much more mm. than what you, what you can ever think. But I want to just maybe just um, for, for, for those that, we, we talked about the city. Pastor Don, and then we talked about this country homes. How is it going to work? Are we going to live in the city? Are we going to live 
outside? Can, can we move out of the city? What, what, does, what is it? How does it look in your minds anyway? Well, one thing I know about that city, it's going to be a good city, that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this earth doesn't... <laughs> cities have problems. But, but that, I don't know, in, in my mind or my understanding, and I, I, I can't verify this, but maybe you can help me, is maybe we'll have a city home and we'll have a country home. Mm. And maybe I, I just picture... As on Sabbath, we're going to the New Jerusalem. Mm. We're like, okay, well, let's the temple that we're going to... No, is it, does the Revelation say there's a temple? Is Christ the temple? There is a temple. Okay. Mm. Um, I mean, we know there's the, the heavenly sanctuary. Mm. But, yeah, that's but, what I'm referring to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, so what I've got in mind is on Sabbath, we, we all gather together for, for worship, worshiping God, mm. worshiping Christ, and... Maybe we work out in the country. I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I don't know, Tenshi, if you've got something different, but I'm well, along the same lines as well. Uh, I'm, uh, yes. I'm along the same lines as well. Yes. I, I totally um, have the same picture in my mind. Okay. So where do we get the, uh, the only thing that I, I, I would like to maybe just also add to mm-hmm. that idea is it says in Revelation 22, verse 1 and 2, it talks about the pure river of life. It comes from the throne of God. Mm-hmm which we know is in the city. Mm-hmm. And then also the tree of life that's oh, yes. also in the midst so of the garden. So we need to partake of the tree of yes. life. Yes. Yes. So it makes time. sense that we will go to the city also not just to worship, but to also partake of the tree of life, mm-hmm. which is in the city. So I like that idea and um, of, of where God is to worship there, to be there and also have the little... But what, whatever is going to be, it's, it's, it's going, it's going <laughs> to yeah. be perfect. It's going to be perfect. Yeah. And, um, and I think uh, God is excited to, to show us yes. what he had in mind for us. Yes. It, it, it's, I think it, it's, well, the reason we're asking is because sometimes we speak up in the air about mm. heaven and we don't put actual things down, yes. mm. you know. And that makes sense. That there will be a city, but then I was just mm. read also, we will also plant. So mm. there's definitely this mm. country home idea and this city home mm. idea. Mm. You know, uh, and people think they have three homes, one on the lake, one on the mountain. <laughs> one. You know, but, but this is actually, I think, what it's about. Um, maybe Christ recognizes that, yes, we are thankful for people, but there's times where you need to be out in nature, you need to explore. Mm. And we know as beautiful as... Our mountains are here. This is not what God intended. It's supposed to be even more beautiful. Yeah. This was done after the flood and mm. the corrosion, erosion of, of the, the ground and all these things are happening. Um, I think it will be really be restored to God's original plan. And this beauty um, that we will one day see will be for our enjoyment. It will mm. be for us learning new things mm. of God and, you know, we, I, I actually wanted to get to the animals as well, but, yes. but still. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can just comment quickly. Mm. And this is a, a conversation. Everything we say needs to be tested by God's mm. word. Absolutely. But I'm just thinking, trying to put the, the, the pieces together. Jesus said, John 14, verse 1 to 3, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many yes. mansions and mm. many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Mm-hmm. And where I get, we'll leave it there. And so this in my mind would make sense that this is referring to, um, to heaven. Yes. Now, J- Jesus is in heaven. He's preparing these places. Let's, I'm just thinking, if this is the Father's house, maybe this is in the New Jerusalem. Maybe there's many rooms, many mansions there. So we'll have a place there. Now, just picture the new Jerusalem descending from heaven Mm. onto the new earth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the earth is made new, cleansed by fire. God recreates Mm. the earth. And then, so we've got this, we've come down in our home in the new Jerusalem. We've got our room there or our mansion there. So there's our city Mm. home. And then here and now, we we can go and plant and build. It makes sense to in now that the, we are on the new earth, you know, if we fast forward at that time after the thousand years, it makes sense that now we'll have to go out and plant our vineyards, build our homes, but we've still got our room or our mansion. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I don't know. That's 
you no, yeah, it? absolutely. No, definitely. Absolutely. Uh, we, we, we've spoken about things that, that will be there, but I want to maybe just for a brief moment speak about things that won't be there. Mm. Okay, sure, that's an interesting one. <laughs> uh, what won't be there? <laughs> the devil I mean, won't be there. The yes. devil won't be there. What does that entail, Rutenja? What does it mean if the devil's not there? No more sin. No more temptation. Mm. No more temptation. No more people being ugly with each other. Imagine living mm. in a world where everybody's in perfect harmony. Mm. It's totally in contrast to where we are now. Mm. I cannot imagine that. There's no, there's no gossip. There's no ugliness with each other. There's no murder. There's no, there's no backbiting. There's no, there's mm. nothing that it's makes you sad. Mm. Yes, it's like perfect harmony between people. Mm. That's amazingness. Mm. And another thing that's not going to be is no more death. So, yeah. Yeah. That's and a huge one. no more separation from your loved ones. Um, I like to actually mm. see that, that where it says that there will be no more sea. I would like to. Think of that. This is the concept of separating people. Mm, mm. And because we know that when God created, mm. there were lots of p animals in the sea. And it's, yeah. I mean, the whales of those times, not the whale size, mm. this day, it was huge <laughs> stuff, you know? Mm. So there, is, there was big water masses. Mm. So I think that the sea is maybe a, a good symbol of separation that, that, that came in with mind. the fleet flood and stuff. Yes, everybody's going to be again close to each other and that kind of thing. That's just a concept I have. I don't know whether I'm on the right path. But um, because I, I also believe that the animals are still going to be there, you know? <laughs> All those ocean animals are still going to be there. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's just like that's also not going to be there. Mm. Illness. Mm. Like, I mean, um, little people that cannot walk mm. or, or talk or mm. see. Imagine um, people that we know that's got chronic pain each mm. day in our mm -hmm. lives. No more pain. I day. think they're yeah. going to enjoy heaven so much. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. all that pain just gone. Mm. No need for any doctors. Yeah. It, it's just like, it's amazing. There's some of the things that won't be there. No yeah. heartache. No more heartache. Imagine that. Um, Pastor Don, I, I love this verse in Isaiah um, 65 or 17. It says, for behold, and it makes uh, uh, no excuse and it makes no there's no ambiguity here uh, about what it's talking about. It says, for behold, I create new heavens mm -hmm. and a new earth. Now, I just want to stop there quickly. This is Isaiah 65, written even hundreds of years before Christ. And often we'd like to think that this new earth idea is a New Testament teaching. Yeah. It's not. Mm -mm. It's In fact, most of the verses quoted is... Uh, it comes out of the Old Testament, or in Revelation mm. especially, anyway. Um, so this new earth, it is something that, uh, I mean, Abraham looked forward to. You know, if to go all the way back. In fact, Adam looked forward to it. Okay? But, but listen to this. It says here, For behold, I create a new heavens and a new earth, and the former things will not be remembered or mm. come to mind. Mm. Hmm. I often have our thoughts put us in prison mm, mm. Uh, just because of what we remember, the hurt that we've suffered. But God is going to be so gracious, even the, the painful thoughts won't be there. Mm. I mean, that for me is heaven. You know, mm. so we, we go on holiday, you're like, oh, this, this is a holiday is, is heaven. I feel like heaven. But in the back of your mind, you must go back to work, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you must go do your thing, go slave away, face, do some, face the realities again. But God is saying he will even take away that. I mean, oh, that for me is, a, is, yeah. is really. And it will be, I think it's because we, it will be filled. It, I know our minds will be filled with new things to learn more, to love deeper. You know, so there won't be room for these things in our minds. The former things will not be remembered or come to mind. Mm -hmm. And then you promised that you'll get back to the animals, eh? The animals, <laughs> please. Please, Pastor Don. <laughs> no, you, you've got something to say about the animals. <laughs> Always. <laughs> I remember since I was a little girl, that was the main attraction for me about the new earth, mm. is the animals. Okay. I'm a big animal lover, and there's nothing like... I've got this... A picture in my mind of 
Oh, there are lots of wild animals. I would love to cuddle, cuddle, but I know on mm. this earth, mm -mm, no, I don't think uh, it's going yes. to happen. But um, but as I grew older, heaven became more less about what I'm going to get, mm. and more about who is going to be there. Mm. And I've been challenged a, a while back, even though I I knew about this, just to rethink the whole concept of why would people want to be in heaven. Was it for what, how it's going to be or who they are going to be with? And I was thinking of human relationships because we can relate to those. Mm. Have you ever been in love that, that you would say, I, I will go wherever you go. It doesn't matter. I would just want to be with you, just as mm. long as I'm with you. It, it, it makes me think of the story of uh, where Ruth said to you, Naomi, wherever you go, I will be with you. And I was just wondering, say, for instance, Jesus would tell, would, would tell us, you know, the new earth is just going to be the same as the old one. No, no, no spectacular things. Um, will you still want to be with me there? And so that challenges our motives of why we want to be mm -hmm. on the new earth. Is it because of Jesus and being close to him or all the golden streets and the pearls and all the yeah. wonderful things? In my case, when I was a little girl, is it more about just, oh, wow, I'm going to have, I could be able to stroke the lions and kiss the tigers and all that kind of thing, you know, mm -hmm. if I can make it on a very uh, basic yeah. level. And, um, and it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Yeah. Interesting. In our last conversation, this also came up on the millennium and the end of sin. Also touched on, if I remember correctly, like our, our perceptions of heaven and our motives. Um, yeah, more like, or maybe it's our expectations of what it's going to be like. And... I think today we've we've helped give a good understanding of that, and I like what you're saying. It's ultimately Jesus is. I mean, to see to see Jesus, mm -hmm. to see God. I mean, that's that should be the ultimate motivation, Absolutely. face to face. Think of that him. As we as we draw to a close, uh, Pastor Taran Rutenza, you know what heaven reveals to me is it, it shows who God really is. Because the new earth, or at least not heaven, but the new earth shows who God really is. It, it, it shows that God is in the business of restoration. God's in the business of, you know, going beyond what we yeah. thought he can do um, to, well, make us happy. Yes. And with, with that, I, I want to say that the new earth, it draws us to God. This concept of the new earth draws us. When the Bible speaks of the new earth, I mean, even to the atheists, the Bible speaks of the new earth. Mm. It speaks to you whether you believe in God or not, um, but it still speaks about the new earth. And when I see people always trying to live for tomorrow, live for something better, they are actually saying where well, they want something new. There's a desire in, mm. in someone that... In, in people that always want to strive for something better, something mm. that they've not tasted before. And now we find, uh, at least in, in, in the year, we find mm. ourselves, um, these millionaires, they're going to space. Mm. They, they're always trying to find something new, trying to, some, trying to find something better, right, that they've never seen before. But it, I believe it's a, it, 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 draw, it should draw us to God and not to ourselves and our own reliance. Mm. But Rutenja, there's... Someone listening, say there's someone listening today and that has now heard about this new earth concept. How could we help that person make this new earth a reality, um, this idea of the new earth? Um, and why should they make, have, uh, or at least have this concept or this teaching of the new earth a reality in their lives? I would say... If you think about a new earth, it gives you hope. Mm. It gives you excitement to look forward mm. to something. Mm. It gives you a prospect of whatever I'm going through on earth, this is not the end. It gives you the, the determination to go through life's challenges. And um, if you lose something, you know, whatever I'm losing this to, what I'm what God is preparing for me is going to be so much better. It's going to be mm. worthwhile. It. 
So it, 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 it makes life on earth actually very practical. Mm. And it touches our everyday lives, our everyday decision making, how we see things. It t- totally changes the vision. Mm. Because now life is on, it's not just on earth and then it stops and ends. Mm. Now it's beyond. And that beyond is much better than we have now. Mm. So it basically touches life in a very practical way. It gives you perspective. Yes. Like I'm just thinking of Hebrews chapter 11, like with those heroes of faith that are mentioned there. Thinking of two here. One is Moses, is chapter 11, 24 to 26. It says, By faith Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Mm-hmm. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Why? For he looked to the reward. Mm. So he knew, like, it changed his perspective on life. Think of, so whatever that reward, but it was something not now. So, well, that, because of what is coming, I'm going to live my life in a particular way, honoring God now. A little bit earlier on, verse 13 to 16 says, um, these all died in faith. People, obviously, that they've mentioned before, or some of them, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. Mm. And truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. Mm. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Mm. Pastor, can I just add to one thing? Please. It makes me think of the concept of looking forward to a heavenly home. <clears throat> also, this earth is not our home. We are just pilgrims. Is that, I don't know if you had the experience, but every time when I move, <laughs> move as we said in the beginning, um, you think, oh, this is the perfect house. <laughs> I'm so happy here. Mm. Oh, I don't want to move again. <laughs> and then two or three years down the road, you think, oh, mm. I can move again. This is not perfect. It's just like, so I'm ready for change again. So it seems if nothing on earth is perfect. Mm. And sometimes I think God is making us feel uncomfortable where we are. Mm. Not totally satisfied to keep us longing l- for that perfect home. I don't know. That's how I feel. I just tell them, if I settle down here and everything is perfect, maybe I will not look forward to my heavenly home, <laughs> you know? Mm. So it's kind of, we always have a longing inside of us for that ultimate mm. joy and peace and perfect home. You know, this is our last fundamental belief, and they say all good things need to come to an end. But the good news about heaven is, it's not going to come to an <laughs> <Yeah>. end. <laughs> it's the one good thing that will continue it's forever. It's the one good thing that will continue forever. And we will have these conversations. And I've heard many uh, people say, oh, I want to speak to David. I want to speak to, I want to speak to David too. <laughs> <laughs> I want to speak to Moses. I want to speak to uh, Jonah and ask him, how, did it, how was it inside of a whale? <laughs> <laughs> you know, a, a, a big fish. What, what was it like? And, but I want to see Jesus. Mm. I want to see Jesus and, you know, really look into his face and just thank him and throw my, if I'm worthy, uh, throw my crown at his feet and just praise him for what he has done. And for not just in the new earth, but also on this old earth. He has done a marvelous work mm. and may it not be for naught, for nothing, that mm. Christ has come and prepared everything where we find ourselves there. To our listeners that's listening in, this is our prayer for you, that you will find yourself at Jesus' feet, that you will find yourself knowing him better and better. And again, if there's any questions, any comments that you have, um, please reach out to us. Uh, our contact details at the end of this video. And uh, please drop us an email or whatever means on our social media pages. Please reach out to us if you want to know more about this Jesus. May you experience him today. And may we see each other, not if we don't see each other on this earth, mm-hmm. may we see each other on the new earth. Rutinja, can you pray for us, please? Sure, I can. We want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for this wonderful privilege we had 
It's talking about you, heaven, the new earth. And as Pastor Ezra has just said, we want to see people in heaven. Um, ask them what the experiences was. But Lord, we look most forward to going to you and asking you how your experience of the cross was. Mm. When you saw each one of our lives and our faces, when you went to heaven to prepare a place for us, Lord, will you please help us to never put more prize on something on earth and not mm. wanting to give it up. Because everything is going to be worthwhile to give up for you, Lord. Will you please, by your grace, your love and your mercy and your help, Help us to one day be there to occupy the homes you have prepared for us. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for today's episode in the I Believe podcast series and for the journey that we've had together. Yeah, please feel free to get in contact, as Pastor Ezra said. We'd like to, yeah, to continue connecting with you. And yeah, thank you so much. God bless. Thank you so much for joining us for our episode in the I Believe presentation series. If you have any questions or if you would like to make contact with us, please do so at our contact details in the description or on our social media sites. Thank you so much and God bless you.